one, Luke here with Guardian Fleet Safety. Got a 2017 Charger we just finished up today here. Uh, it's getting delivered to the customer tomorrow. We got some uh, different equipment on here that we haven't really shown before, so we just kind of wanted to do a quick video and kind of show you some of the other products we offer. So as you can see, it's not always uh, nice and sunny here in beautiful Minnesota, but uh, duty calls. So, uh, what's on the bumper here? This is Weston's uh, push bumper. Um, they really only have one model, it's basically their police model. Um, they make them for the utility, the Charger, um, F-150, Tahoe, uh, all the standard police type vehicles you can find them. Uh, what we really like about these is that they are probably the heaviest duty push bumpers on the market. Uh, Minnesota, I guess, is a pit state, you could say. A lot of agencies here pit. Um, so th this is uh, their pit wrap here is by far the heaviest duty pit wrap you will be able to find on the market. Um, it has two two support brackets that come in on the side to hold it, um, and this thing is absolutely solid. We have some other ones that uh, we've done before that uh, even when you pull up on them, you know you can even if they're cranked down on the real tight, you can still move the bumper a little bit. They're just you know uh, they're just not well built. This thing is absolutely rock solid. I mean you can shake the whole car with this; it doesn't move an inch. Um, price point on this. Very, very competitive. Um, this this will beat Centina, ProGuard, um, any of the other ones out there. Um, every day of the week, this is going to come in cheaper. Um, and the nice part, too, is they're built here right here in Minnesota. Um, so we like to keep it local, yeah, if at all possible. Um, on the side of the push bumper here, um, we have the uh, Sound Off Signal M Power lights. Again, dual color, as we always like to do. And that's going to give you um, your alley light function when the alley lights are on. We have a repurposed um, Par 36. Um, Wheeling, uh, they got the Lin Lindsay six heads in them. Um, that's repurposed from the old car that we stripped out. Okay, we're at the side of the vehicle here. Um, the light bar here, sound off signal, Enforce, the dual color light bar. Uh, for the price point, you get a lot of bang for your buck out of this. There's basically two kinds of light bars on the market. You have your smart light bars, uh, which are going to be your, you know, your, your weak hand on the Wheeling side. Uh, any of your Enforce bars are going to be smart. Uh, Federal Signal Code 3, they all have smart bars too. Uh, and then you have what you call your low current bars. Those are your basic bars where you power a wire and the light comes on. You don't get the computer functions like you do with the smart bar. Um, some of the things that we like about these smart bars is that uh, you can program them with endless capabilities. Um, so a pretty standard feature that we do here on these squad cars, uh, especially the chargers, when you pop open the door, um, it's going to kill the corner, corner light here. And the reason it does that is for officer safety reasons. Um, one being that when the officer is coming back into their car from a traffic stop to open this, they're not getting blinded. Um, again, we've all been in law enforcement. I've done this a million times and it really pisses you off when you're trying to get back in the car. Right before you jump in, you get that blast from the quarter module of the light bar. It sucks. Um, so this is just real handy. It cuts that off so when you get in, you're not getting blinded. And it also serves as uh, not backlighting the officer. So when the officer is getting out of their car from a traffic stop, he's got his door open. It's not flashing on him. The suspect can't, you know, look back and see, you know, it's flashing off there. Obviously, it's going to come back on when you shut the door, but just give them that little bit of extra safety on their side there. So, um, and again, for the price point, um, you can't beat these sound off signal and force bars. Um, they go head to head with uh, the other major competitor bars all the time. Um, and again, uh, if you're looking for value, um, the, the sound off signal and force bar is really your best bet. Okay, so here on the back of the car, um, on the back deck here, we have a pair of sound off signal ghosts. Um, obviously our Amber traffic director goes into a flashing mode uh, when it's um, not being activated. Um, the light ring here, the reverse lights are set up on actually an LED flasher. Um, and these are the factory uh, Dodge um, wig wags for the rear that comes from factory. Um, here in Minnesota, we have the digital 800 megahertz system statewide. So uh, that's why in some of the cars from the Dakotas see these big whips on these little ones. You just see these little antennas. That's why we can get away with those. Um, on the chargers, we like to put them on the trunk. It just makes it look a little bit slicker. Um, and I think uh, people, when these go to get resold, re people prefer to have them on the trunk lid instead of the roof. Um, other than that, pretty basic back here. Um, this is a really pretty generic setup, um, but just kind of gives you an idea of how we do a charger um, and some of the stuff that we do with it. So. So we're going to look in the trunk now, uh, look at the electronics tray um, and what we do with that. Um, one of the nice reasons that we put these down here and even with the light bar we advise getting um, a deck lights like this is for this very reason. When this trunk lid is up, 
Um, it blocks the light bar. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of the world that we live in today. Um, but uh, you can still get some lighting from back here with these. So uh, we're going to move the camera over into here. This, uh, this is our equipment tray that we use. Um, we put these in every Dodge Charger that we do. Um, and it's just nice because it keeps all the wiring nice and tucked away, um, but also very serviceable. We can flip this down. We have our master power um, breaker for everything. Um, then we also have all our fuse panel for all of our electronics. Um, so if the fuse were ever to pop for anything, we have it right there. Um, and as you can see, it's very clean. Um, I mean, this stuff almost looks factory coming in here. Um, we try really hard to do, you know, an absolute um, best job um, we can to get this stuff done right the first time. So. So in the inside of the vehicle here, we have a repurposed console from the old Charger. Um, we added in a new uh, Wheelin 295 SLSA6 Siren controller, and then obviously the department provided Motorola radio. Uh, we have our Stalker uh, radar up there, display unit up there. Um, Dodge removed the um, cubby hole that a lot of those radars used to be put in. Um, so up there we found is a good, perp um, good place to put that. We have a brand new WatchGuard 4RE camera system in here. Um, and then we have our, do our Havis docking uh, pole mount assembly. The docking station is, is coming at a later point in time. Um, and then as always, we have our magnetic mic. Um, something I'd like to point out too is, uh, you know, sometimes um, these cars aren't always the same in how they're set up. Um, please don't send us an email or call us and tell us we should have put something somewhere else. Uh, the customers specify a lot of this stuff where it goes. If we have discretion, um, we put it in what we feel is best based on our training experience. Um, but a lot of times the customer says, hey, I want this here. So uh, don't send me an email and say, hey, you should put it somewhere else because I don't have control over that. So, But other than, that, other than that, everything else is pretty basic in here. Um, just want to show you a couple other quick things and then we'll let you get to it. Okay, so here we're under the uh, hood of this charger. And uh, what I wanted to point out was our, our wiring here. And we actually posted this up on our Facebook page and asked people if they could even identify where our wiring is. Uh, I'm going to show you now. So drum roll, please. The secret is revealed. Uh, this is our wiring harness that actually comes out of here. It runs right along here, down here, and up here. The reason I wanted to point that out is we use the exact same um, wire coverings that this stuff is um, that comes right from the factory. Okay, it's heavy duty. It's made for engine compartments. It gives it that OEM look. Um, I mean, the stuff looks like it came right from the factory. So and that's really what we strive for is quality above all else. And um, so that's just a good illustration. Uh, we've seen some nightmare squad cars come in that have wires all over the place and just look like a disaster and with ours we really try and keep it looking clean even though cleanliness is not everything in a build it really is the total package and quality um, but you know you spend the good money on getting your squad upfitted you don't want to open up the hood and have it looks like a rat's nest so um, that's all we got into this thing appreciate you guys watching um, again if you guys need a squad car built uh, warning lights uh, anything like that we pretty much do it all uh, you check out our Facebook page, Guardian Fleet Safety, or give us a call, 320-245-4000. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time.